teach grade three, and at the very beginning of the year, the very first day actually of school, I have some students that come and are feeling very anxious about taking the test, and their very first um, hello to me is, is EQAO year, when are we gonna have to write the test? So I notice um, that the students feel actually very nervous, they're anxious, and they're really worried about taking the test. And I find that I do have to prepare them for it. So throughout the year, we plow through the curriculum, we make sure we do a really good job teaching the math, all the strands, as well as language. We take a look at past EQAO tests and examples, and we look through all of those. But I feel that they have all the knowledge that they need to know to write the test. However, because they are so nervous about taking it, I feel like they have to prepare them mentally as well. So I developed this lesson um, so that students can feel like they're able to take the test even if they have all the knowledge or even if they don't have all the knowledge that they're gonna be successful because they feel as though in their heart they can do it. So we look at past EQAO tests and they get a, uh, a chance to look at other responses. Uh, we talk about them. We write um, different genres that maybe we've seen in past EQAO tests. We talk about ways to answer um, a multiple choice question. We talk about ways to answer an open uh, language response question. We talk about the strategies used to um, answer an open math question. We talk about um, all of the EQAO terms like define, describe, compare, you know, all of those throughout the year. In my assessment, I use a lot of EQAO samples so that when students have to write the test, they've already seen EQAO the entire year and they know that they can do it so it's not a surprise for them. And I also feel that I don't wait until the very last minute and then do like a, you know, like a, it's EQAO time, we got to crunch down and actually start teaching it now. So as of day one in September, we talk about it, and they're constantly doing it throughout the year, so they feel as though they can do it. In our classroom, we do have a community-type classroom feel. So at the very beginning, we talk about tribes, and that's actually a tribes um, classroom. So we talk about showing mutual respect and having appreciations, no put down, um, and what all those agreements mean. And then we just worked hard towards them showing those all year. We also talk about how our classroom is like a family. And if you ask my students, they'll say, you know, our classroom is like a family, so we need to respect and care for one another, just as if you would do with the members of your own family. And we do tribes cheers in the classrooms, the cheese grater, they learn the cowboy cheer, all of the different cheers to kind of just cheer them on if, you know, they're up in front of the class, they might feel a little bit nervous. Um, another one of our agreements is the right to pass, which is really nice. So the students don't feel like they're put on the spot ever. Um, if we're in community circle and we're sharing um, our responses, they can just choose to pass and then I just go on to the next friend. And then I'll revisit them and ask them if they wanted to share um, after hearing everybody else's responses. If their answer is still no, then they don't feel as though they have to actually share um, how they're feeling. So that, I feel, creates a very nice classroom feel and it makes students feel comfortable. Um, in the room. I really wanted to do it the day just before the EQAO test because this is when they're feeling the most nervous and um, I just feel that some of the components in the lesson are very helpful to all of the students, not just the ones that are feeling anxious about taking the test. I find that all of my level four students are actually just as nervous as all the kids that are on IEPs or maybe feel as though they're not going to be able to answer the questions. And I just feel if they know how to do it and they feel like they're able to do it, that they'll all do well in the end. So some of the um, components to the lesson are we take a little vote in the morning and they get to choose what they would like their EQAO celebration to be. And one of those is something like, you know, ice cream cones and playing at the park or like a pizza and a movie is another vote. And there's a couple of other ones that they choose. And I just feel like they're going to graph their results based on what they chose. And it's just, it's meaningful for them because they got to pick what they wanted as their celebration. And then they kind of get excited about actually taking this test and then having their ice cream cone at the park, right? Another component is for them to make a worry stone that they decorate, they put a little magic penny on and it comes with a really nice poem and they put it under their pillow at night. And I tell them that they're allowed to take this magic worry stone home that night because they're always like, can I take it home tonight? And so I like to do it the day before the test because then it's new um, and then they just take their worry stones, slip it under their pillow and they sleep at night and they almost all bring them in for the test the next day. So I let them have their worry stone beside them as they're taking the test. 
I haven't found that anybody fools around with them. I just feel like um, they think that it actually works. Um, and they get an opportunity to share that they think that it actually works <laughs> with their friends. And so even if their other friends are not convinced, by the time they hear the conversation, the next night they put it under their pillow. <laughs> <laughs> got to see that uh, past students wrote um, an EQAO survival guide and so then they got to sort of read what other students have written about the test when the test was over um, and given them a little bit of advice about what they have to do when they have to take the test. So then their response at the end of the test is always, well can we make a survival guide for the students for next year? Um, and so we're in the process of doing that now. Um, and then it's nice because when the kids go out on the playground, next year my students will be able to go and see them and say, oh, you know, we got to read your uh, survival guide, um, you know, sentence and it really helped me. And, you know, so they really want to be kind of like mentors for the next uh, group of students who are going to be taking the test. <laughs> Feel, uh, goes beyond the classroom, it also goes um, school-wide as well. So at Chidoak we do a really good job here I find um, just le letting kids, making kids feel good about themselves. We just feel like kids are really supported here um, at our school and we really feel like um, you know kids do come first and we really try our best to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm.